Hello guys and welcome again to the Pig Father series, The Life of a Piglet, Series 2. Today we're going to talk about piglet winning. So like I mentioned um, in the previous, our previous um, two sessions, winning time of piglets starts between two and a half to three weeks of age and it continues right up until six to even eight weeks. These guys now, this is our boy, little boy Oli, little girl, we called her Calliope, and another girl, Cookie. They are now nine weeks of age. They have been weaned for one week, so that means that they've started fully eating adult food from last week. So they stopped drinking mama's milk and they're now eating pellets, eating a, a range of vegetables, a little bit of fruit and interested in hay. So what I really wanted to talk to you about today guys is answer some questions that we've had so many questions coming in by email, Facebook messaging, basically asking how to look after piglets when you buy when you first buy your piglet so i've written down some of the most common questions and i want to go through them with you so as um i just mentioned weaning period is between six to eight weeks so when piglets are fully weaned in our case it was eight weeks they can go to their forever homes so that means they are fully independent to grow by themselves and they do not need the presence of their mama. Okay, during this time, eight weeks, they are learning so fast. They are basically like sponges. They will learn the environment around them. They learn about you, the new owner how you treat them, how you talk to them. They recognize your voice. They recognize your behavior, how confident you are, how calm you are. They are very sensitive animals. So this is the best time to start more socialization with them. Our piglets have been in our house. They've met our giant 90 kilogram dog. So they're not afraid of large animals, which is what we wanted. So that when they go to their forever homes, they're not afraid, they're not startled, which is something which is very common in piglets because they're prey animals. They can easily be startled by sudden loud noises, by appearances of, of, of a dog or a large dog, a fox, even a squirrel. So around here we've got a lot of foxes, we've got squirrels, we've got birds and they get used to this and they're not afraid. So I'll talk more about training a bit later on. <laughs> All you like she's a creature come with. Come on boy. Come on boy. Okay so let's read one of the questions that people ask. Okay so can I keep one piglet and can I keep a piglet inside the house? That was one of the questions. What I would say from our own experience, we've had piglets in our house, we kept them in the, indoors. It was for quite a few months and I can only speak from my experience and ask you a question if you're considering that. I know we've got a few viewers who will be joining us later today who have asked that question. The question I would ask is how much time do you think you have to give the piglet when they are inside your house? These guys live in outdoors in a secure pen. So when we go to work, when you go to work, you need to think of what would happen to the piglet or piglets when they're inside your house. Unlike dogs, pigs are constantly on the go, as you can see. They're constantly looking for food because that's what their natural behavior is, is to look for food and forage. That's what they would be doing in your house. So, good girl. Girl cookie. <laughs> they will be doing that in your house. Their natural behavior, as I just said, is to constantly walk, go around. So you have to be able to 
to provide for them a secure space so they don't get hurt and also so they do not get themselves into trouble because this pig's nose is very sensitive and very much stronger than a dog. So what they would be doing inside your house is constantly looking for food. Because these guys are also so intelligent, I'll talk about it a bit later on, they figure out where food is kept and they're very intelligent to learn how to open cupboards and sheds. One of our big boys, Sonny, has learned how to open our shed. So if it's not secure, he will go in and help himself and reach bags of food and uh, and just gorge himself, <laughs> which is not good. So think about these things. Can you provide a piglet with a secure place in your house that you can put the piggy indoors when you are busy, when you're going away to work or to shops? Also, although they look very small and cuddly, piglets and pigs are stronger than dogs, most dogs. We've got almost nine kilogram, 90 kilogram dog. He's a great Swiss mountain dog. And we've got pigs that are smaller than him in weight and in height, but they are actually much stronger than our dog. When they walk through the house, they push him aside, a 90 kilogram dog. It's because pigs are much more uh, densely built. So what I'm saying this for is that when they indoors, it's quite hard to construct a pen that will withstand their strength. Even though they can be small, they are very, very strong and they are determined. That's most importantly uh, to remember. We've got a boy, he's very small. Our boy, he's about 15 kilogram in weight. But because he is so determined, he's gone through double wire because he wanted to get to the girl, so he's actually gone through double wire. So this is what happens to the boars. The girls are not so, so determined, but they're very strong. So that's what I would say. That's a very important consideration. I know a few people who have successfully kept pigs inside, but because they had a lot of time to give to the pig, um, or somebody is there at home most of the day. They may have dogs, they may have cats. Actually, uh, pigs do get on with cats in now in experience better. Cats, rabbits, rather than dogs, because dogs very often see pigs as prey, so they can chase piglets, which is obviously not safe. So, in our experience, what I found, just to wrap up this conversation about keeping piglets indoors, think about how much time you have to look after the pig, whether you can construct a safe and um, strong enclosure where you can put the pigs in when you are busy. And um, another important consideration to, to, to make when you're thinking whether to keep a pig indoors or outdoors is pig's natural behavior for the pig. So they've gone inside the house. They are much happier when they're raised outdoors because they can do that. They can do foraging, which is looking for food. They love rooting in the soil, in the mud. They love their straw. I know you can provide rooting boxes indoors. You can give them toys, you can give them a material to root, but it's still, in our experience, it's not the same thing as a pig raised outdoors. So, of course, it is completely your, your choice whether you wish to keep a pig indoors or outdoors, but from my experience, from my experience, is that it is much easier to look after a pig when you keep them outdoors and actually it is healthier for them because soil provides the necessary minerals that food, pelleted food, cannot provide. There are certain micro elements that are not included in the food that the soil has and which is very important for them. Right, let's quickly move on. <coughs> Washing pigs. That was a question whether you can wash a pig. You can wash a pig. These guys, don't worry my nose. Where are you? 
They do not like wind. Maybe if we can come a little bit closer. They do not like wind. That's one thing pigs do not like. Rain and wind. But the combination of the two they don't really like. So they're hiding inside the, their door. Maybe we can even show them inside. We live eating, eating hay, eating straw. So as I talk, the question is about washing pigs. You can wash pigs. You can start from, from as early as you get your, your piglet home. <laughs> so that's it. Yeah, this is little Uli, Uli and Calliope. Right. Yes, these guys were actually washed yesterday. I washed them, shampooed them, so they're very fresh. <laughs> and Uli, it's okay, my love. It's okay. Uli is just, he's the boss, the boss of our little herd, so he's always establishing himself by pushing other pigs from the area where he wants to eat and where he wants to sleep. That's completely natural behavior. But I'll talk about training in a minute. So he does not do that to you because that will be a very spoiled and a difficult pig to live with. Okay, washing. Yes, washing is very, is important if you can. It's not essential to wash a pig because there are farms that um, are not able to wash pigs. In our situation, we can. Um, we have washed it. Um, good pigs used to be in washed both in the bathtub and also using a hose with warm water. So this is all possible, but you have to start gradually so the piglets are not afraid preferably if you put food in a bathtub or if you smear a lot of people also find useful to smear a little bit of peanut butter or if you you or your children have allergies to nuts or sesame seeds you can smear a bit of coconut on the inside of the bath so and the pigs can actually lick it and stand still in a bath I would also put non-slip mats so that piggies do not sleep as you wash it them so that's another thing you can pick up the piglet safely and then gently low into the bath and quickly wash they do not like having that done but it can be possible we prefer to use a hose with warm water and we shampoo them as they eating and that keeps them nice and clean the shampoos the type of shampoos you can use is either baby baby shampoos like Johnson's or natural dog shampoos we prefer to use shampoos based on um, herbs herbal shampoos or neem oil shampoo which is also very good as a preventative from them getting mange mite or mice this is something that pigs can get rather than fleas they do they can get lice so just to prevent them from getting them all right so that's washing another question came up about sunscreen whether you need to put some sunscreen on the pigs when it is hot and if the pigs live in an enclosure which is exposed to full sunlight without much shade there are a few things you can do um, what do we do you can either put sail or an umbrella or some sort of covering it could be uh, a plank of wood going say from the top of this house to the um, to the edge of the fencing you can use that to provide piggies with natural sun protection or you what you can use good girl good girl can I be good girl they do like scratches scratch scratch good girl <laughs> I need to put my boots away mm -hmm. what you can also good girl can I be they know their names I put her name so she knows can I be knows her name so what you could also do is buy some sun cream there are so many on the market. We prefer to use natural ones without too many chemicals inside. And you can put on the edges of the pig's ears. What I have found is that dark colored pigs, they don't get sunburn on the top of their bodies, but they get the tips of their ears get very, very dry. So occasionally I put sun cream if it's very hot and there is a lot of sun luckily for us we have very shaded areas and the piggies get a little bit of sunlight which they do like and they actually enjoy lying in the sunshine so you can use sun cream especially on lighter colored pigs you can you can apply it all over their body especially during times when pigs 
shed their coat. Shedding of their coat is called blowing. Some pigs blow their hair really dramatically, so all they can lose, <laughs> this way my notes, they can literally lose all of their hair in two weeks. So we've got some pigs that blow their hair completely and some pigs that only that only shed a little bit at a time. So if you see thinning of the hair, especially starts from the back, then you can put sun cream on top. Okay? Alright, let's move on. Right, sun cream pigs living indoors. Yes, another question was about foxes. Are piglets okay with foxes? Again, in our experience, what, what we've had is that um, my observation is that foxes are very much afraid of pigs. Maybe because um, we have pigs roaming around our in environment, so they come out of the pens on a daily basis. Every single pig comes out but the foxes we've got a fox then next to the pig pen and the foxes have learned not to come to the pig pen. certain pigs i've noticed who are lower in rank which means they are subordinate pigs like calliope she is a subordinate pig um, which means she is not a, sub a not a boss of our little herd so she's the shy one she normally, pigs like that, in my experience, they are the protectors of the herd. So that what happened with our, with their mom Connie. When Connie was the same size, she was protecting Mikey and Sunny who are our boys. So they were bigger than her. She had a lower rank. In pigs have a lot of hierarchy, very strict hierarchy, which I'll talk about later as well. So... Uh, what I'm saying is that the lower ranking pigs can actually attack a fox and this is what happened with us. When we're raising breeding pigs, their mama is very protected so she will, she will chase the fox away. Foxes also are very intelligent animals and they learn that the smell of the pig is not something <laughs> very pleasant to them because they associate the smell of the pig with danger. So in our experience we've never had a problem with pigs being attacked by foxes. So, But obviously when the piglet is small, if they escape the sight of their mom, if you have a large field and they escape, then of course they, they can be vulnerable to a fox attack. All right, it's beginning to rain and the piglets want to go inside. So let's have a quick look inside before we soon wrap up. Right, okay, how many amounts to feed? Right, another quick question was about cleaning pig's teeth. I have seen this done and I have done it when the piglets were young. If you wish to do that, there is nothing that stops you um, teaching the pig to clean, to clean their teeth. But you have to start very young. In my experience, pigs do not enjoy it. You can use a toothbrush to brush their teeth for a reward. But what I have found, if you give pigs some, a little bit like dogs, when dogs chew on bones or um, teeth cleaning products, um, so their teeth are naturally cleaned by their chewing action. With pigs, if they chew hay, if they chew vegetables, if you give them carrots or other root vegetables and they chew on that, they can clean their teeth naturally. I also find how it's beginning to rain. <laughs> I also find that they do like twigs like willow or ash. We've got an ash tree, so pigs love to chew on, on the twigs bark and that cleans their teeth as well. Okay, they, they love being inside their home. We've just moved them. Once we win them, we move them into a nice cozy home. That's very important to keep pigs dry and draft proof. Um, if the piglets get wet and cold, they're predisposed to 
are colds just like us to a variety of viruses. They can get pneumonia when they're very young piglets. Quickly, quickly go in. We got to. <laughs> right. Okay. So let's have a quick look inside. I'll just get inside the pigs. Right, I think. So I'm just looking at other things, teeth cleaning, we've, we've covered, right, one more thing before I'll show you something else. Okay, another thing is a mound to feed. If you can see these guys, I'll just go into the other side. Sorry. Right, Uli to Loli and Calliope, they have got cheeks, okay? When they were wind, before they were wind, they were eating obviously drinking mama's milk which is very rich in fat and protein as I discussed last time also they were beginning to eat mama's food during lactation which means when mama pig sow gives them feeds piglets with milk which is called lactation mama requires higher levels of nutrients fat protein minerals and vitamins so we feed her higher density food so it's dense in nutrients and fiber so she can produce milk and not waste away so they've been eating that food so they've put on quite a lot of weight so now we're beginning to introduce adult diet so the pig food that we will keep feeding them into adulthood so which is very important because we do not want pigs to become fat we will, I would prefer to lose these chicks, okay, to lose the tummy. So this is what I call patty fat, and this should go to keep them lean. So the amount of food you feed your piglets very much depend on what they, how they look, their structure, also their weight. I prefer to give piglets between three to five percent of food according to their body weight so three to five percent of their body weight per day so these guys i would give say 150 to 200 grams a day divided into twice daily feeding but i will observe how they grow if they're putting on weight and if they're not reducing their weight i will cut down the pellets and uh, again observe so this is it's not a rule of thumb it's very flexible the amounts you feed and it depends on each individual pig for example calliope is a very calm girl she needs a metabolism how quickly she she digests her food how quickly that food is assimilated in her body is much slower than his or his and cookie cookie is a faster pig so she would require more food than Calliope. So all these things you have to consider. Another question we had asked is about grass. Pigs can put on weight if they're eating too much grass. Although grass is not high in nutrients, pigs can digest grass very well and they can put on weight if they eat too much grass. So if you're allowing your piggy to eat grazing your garden or on your field, make sure you reduce the amount of pelleted food they're getting. Also, you can, um, if you decide to give vegetables and a little bit of fruit, which I think is very important because it gives live nutrients to the animal, your antioxidants, antioxidants and other vital free radical busting nutrients. So natural living food is very important sprouted seeds sprouted grains leaves leafy greens not so many root vegetables like carrots and sweet and butternut squashes they are still high in natural sugar so if you're giving those reduce again the amount of pelleted food you are giving them so again look at your pig look at the body structure mm -hmm. When we sell piglets to new owners, I always show them the ideal weight, the ideal structure that the piggy should have. So that's what we aim for.
Right, guys. The last, not least, I think, in my experience, in my opinion, one of the most important topics I want to talk about is piglet training and um, establishing boundaries with pigs. When these guys are young, they have been trained by their mother, not trained to do commands like sit, stay, calm, not this, but trained to respect. I think, having trained 11 pigs now, I believe that before you even start training your pig commands, like sit, stay, calm and all of that, you have to earn their trust. What are you guys doing? Have to earn their trust, most importantly, and to teach these guys respect to you before you do anything else. There are many, many, many tactics you can use. What are you guys doing there? <laughs> Pushing around. I learned from pigs. I learned from just observing mama, how their mama trains them and how she earns their respect. Unfortunately, um, I cannot, as people obviously, we cannot apply the same rules as animals do towards each other because sometimes it is quite ruthless. And the way mama teaches them is very firm, sharp, and it's swift. It's done once, and then the animals, the, and the piglets understand this is not desirable behavior. For animal welfare purposes, and because we love them, I cannot hit the pig, I cannot scratch the pig, but this is what mama would do. If they are annoying mama, she would push them really hard. Sometimes I've seen not our pigs, but uh, farm pigs. The piglets actually push so hard that they actually fly over. They fly in the air because they annoyed mama. But by, unfortunately, by showing it uh, this way, mama teaches them very quickly, do not do that. But I do not apply these tactics, but I've learned from Mama one thing is that to earn their respect, you have to be the boss and you have to be firm to say what you like to show them and what you do not like. Biting, for example, is not allowed. Being gentle is allowed. Pushing, squealing, crying, screaming to get attention is not allowed. So, how will you do that? All piglets squeal when they're born and when they want something, when they want mama's milk, they squeal. <laughs> no biting, no biting, no biting. Good girl. <laughs> so you do not want pig biting you. Sometimes you have to be firm. I, I usually tap on the nose, no biting. Um, let's just get back to what I what I was saying. Yes, um, pigs are very intelligent and they learn quickly. If they scream, if they squeal, they want something. They might do that if they want food. They might do that if they want to come out of the enclosure. If they've been used to being indoors and they don't want to come outside, they will show it to you by squealing. Little piglets, they squeal loud. So this is not a desirable behavior. How to teach them not to do that, how mama used to teach them, she would just corny ignore, completely ignore the squealing. She would pass them by, they would quickly come to her wanting milk, squeal. So she would say to them, of course, she would push them away and she would completely then ignore them. So what I would say, if you bring your piglet outside and they don't want to stay in their house, or if you're giving them time out, if they've been naughty, you've put them, for example, in a pen, you don't want them be, say, say in the kitchen, constantly begging for food, they will start squealing, wanting to come out. The best thing to do is to ignore that. Do not hit the pig, do not scream at the pig, just ignore. When the pig stops squealing, you reward the behavior you want. So think about what you want of a little piglet, how you want that piglet to behave, 
and encourage that behavior. It's called positive reinforcement. So encourage what you want. You want the piggly to respect you, you need to set boundaries. If you give in to the squealing pig, what it teaches the pig is when I squeal, my mama, my new mama, will come and she will give me food or she will release me outside of my pen so I will get what I want. So what you want to be doing before you train them sit stay, you want to teach them boundaries. I do a lot of training with piglets, people buy from us, so we go through all these different stages how this is done in real life and in practice. So setting your boundaries number one so teach the piglet in a positive way what you want of the piglet they will learn to do good things for food because they're so driven by food they will do most things that you ask them. do not allow the pig to scream lunge at you push you root you when they're little it's very cute but when they become big if they've learned to demand food by coming to you and rooting at your leg, pushing you to ask for food, that can actually hurt and it's not fun. So do not allow the piglet to do something that you do not want an adult, bigger pig to do. Right, so now it's beginning to rain quite a lot. So last thing I want to show you is our two girls, if they will come out of the enclosure for us. These two girls, when they first came to us, they were two weeks, two, two months of age and unfortunately they were not suitable for any therapy training. They were, ah, they were quite aggressive, they were biting, they were moody. So it took months of hard work and I want to show you if they will do it for us during this rain. I want to show you. Let's go to the next enclosure and I'll introduce you to Polly and Polly. Okay. Ooh. This is little Holly. Hello, Holly. Oh, my darling. This is Holly and this is Polly. So, what I want to show you if they will do this is what they have learned with months of training and what you want. If you can see the pig is looking at me, they're not lunging at me, they're not demanding, they've learned to sit down. Sit. How gently they're taking their, their treats from me. They're not biting me. Good girl. 